Hello. Today's lecture will address the behavioral objectives for week three in the syllabus. Because the file is so large, this will be presented in two parts, part A and part B. Make sure to watch both parts to avoid missing critical information. Let's begin. Today we will talk about the growth and development of a toddler preschooler, school age, and then injury preventions related to those age groups. Age 15 months, physical. There is a steady growth in height and weight. Gross motor, typically they will walk without help, usually since the age of 13 months. They creep upstairs and they can kneel without support. <clears throat> uh, they can assume a standing position also without support. Fine motor, they are constantly casting objects to the floor. They can build towers of two cubes. They can hold two cubes in one hand and they can release a pallet into a narrow necked bottle and they scribble spontaneously. Sensory, they're able to identify geometric forms, place round objects into an appropriate hole. Vocalizations, they use expressive jargon. They say four to six words, they, including names. Uh, they ask for objects by pointing and they understand simple commands. They may use their head shaking to, determine, to, to gesture uh, no, so they'll be just shaking their head no. Uh, they often will even use no even when they're agreeing to do something. Socialization. They do tolerate some separation from their parent. Uh, they are less likely to fear strangers. Um, they're beginning to imitate their parents, such as cleaning their house. They may discard the bottle. Uh, they can manage using a spoon, but as the spoon gets closer to their, their mouth, they tend to rotate it, and therefore they may be spilling their food on them. They kiss and hug their parents. They may even kiss pictures in a book. Uh, they're very expressive in their, emotion, their emotions, and here we are seeing those wonderful temper tantrums. Age 18 months. Here they may develop physiologic anorexia because of decreased growth needs. The anterior fontanelle now should be closed and physiologically they may be able to control their sphincters. Gross motor. They can run clumsily, they fall often, they can walk upstairs with one hand held, they pull and push toys are things that they really enjoy playing with. Uh, they can jump in place with both feet. Uh, they can seat themselves on the floor and on the chair. Uh, they can throw a ball overhand without falling. Uh, fine motor, here they're gonna be building a tower of three to four cubes. Um, they can reach uh, well, they can turn pages in a book two to three at a time. Uh, when they draw, they can make uh, strokes imitatively. Um, and here, when they're using a spoon, they will get it to their mouth without rotation. Vocalizations, they have about 10 words. Um, they'll point to common objects um, and they should be able to point to uh, two to three body parts. They are the great imitator. They like to participate in domestic mimicry. Uh, they'll take off gloves, socks, shoes, they may unzip. Uh, temper tantrums are even more evident at this time. And they may develop a dependency on a transitional object or a security blanket. They are basically mean the same kind of thing. 24 months. Here the chest circumference exceeds the head circumference. Um, they can uh, gain a height of anywhere four to five inches. Um, and then their adult height is about double that height of a two-year-old. So basically what you can do is measure your child at two years of age and double that, and that's their approximate adult height. Uh, here, they may uh, develop the ability and they may be uh, becoming ready to have, um, to be potty trained and participate in daytime uh, bowel and bladder control. Gross motor, they can go up and down stairs alone with two feet on each step. They run fairly well with a wide stance. Uh, they can pick up objects without falling and they can also kick a ball forward without overbalancing. Fine motor, here they can build a tower of six to seven cubes 
and even align two or more cubes like a train. They can turn pages of a book now one at a time. Uh, when they draw, they can imitate vertical and circular strokes. They can turn doorknobs and unscrew lids. Sensory. Accommodation is well developed in geometric discrimination. They're able to insert a square block into an oblong space. Vocabulary, they have a vocabulary of about 300 words. They can use uh, three to two to three word phrases. Um, they use the pronouns I, me, you. They can understand directional commands. They may give their first name and refer to themselves by their first name. Uh, they'll verbalize needs, like they need to use the restroom, food, drink. They do talk incessantly. Um, socialization, they do have a, a better attention span. Um, they have an increased independence from their mom, and they tend to be able to dress themselves um, in simple clothing. At 30 months, birth weight has quadrupled. A uh, primary dentition with 20 teeth has completed typically at this time, and they may have now uh, daytime bowel and bladder control. Gross motor, they can jump with both feet. They can jump from a chair or a step. They can stand on one foot momentarily, and they may even take a few steps on tiptoe. Fine motor, here they can build a tower of eight cubes, they can add a chimney to a train of cubes. They have good hand-finger coordination. Uh, if they're holding onto a crayon, they'll hold it with the fingers rather than a fist. Um, <clears throat> they can imitate vertical and horizontal strokes, um, and they can make two or more strokes for a cross. Sensory, here they can give their first and last name, and they may name one color. Socialization, here they're separating more easily from the mother. They're beginning to notice uh, sex differences. They know their own sex. They may attend to toilet needs without the help, with the exception of cleaning themselves. Three years of age, physical. They gain about four to six pounds, uh, and they may increase in about their height with about three inches. And at three, they may have achieved a nighttime bowel and bladder control. That doesn't mean they don't necessarily have an accident now and then. Gross motor. Here they're ready to ride a tricycle. They can jump off a bottom step. They can stand on one foot for a few seconds. Uh, they can go upstairs using alternate feet, but may still come downstairs using um, both feet on a step at the same time. Uh, they can have broad jumps. Uh, they might try to dance. Uh, but their balance might not be adequate enough for this. Fine motor, and, and this is the end of the cubes. Um, they can build a tower of nine to 10 cubes. They can build a bridge with three cubes, and they can adeptly make, place a small pellet and a narrow neck bottle. In terms of drawing, they can copy a circle, imitate a cross, um, they can name what's been drawn. Uh, they may make a circle with facial features. Language. Here they have a vocabulary of about 900 words. They use telegraphic speech, uh, and basically what this is is using the least number of words to get the message across. Uh, they use complete sentences of three to four words. Um, again, they talk incessantly, they ask many questions, and they may even begin to sing songs. Socialization. Typically they will uh, dress themselves almost completely, but they may need to help with buttons if they're in the back and they need to be told uh, which shoe goes on which foot. Um, they should be able to feed themselves completely. Uh, they can even prepare simple meals like pouring uh, milk onto cold cereal. Um, they can help set the table and dry dishes. Um, know that they may have some fears, especially of the dark and going to bed. Um, they do know genders of themselves and of others, and they're starting to share. Uh, cognition, um, they're, they're starting to have a better understanding of time. Um, they can talk about the past and the future as well as the present. Um, they pretend to actually tell time. Um, family relationships, here they attempt to please the parents and conform to their expectations. They're less jealous of younger siblings 
And if you're planning on having multiple children, this might be a great time for the birth of an additional sibling. Uh, boys tend to identify more with their fathers or other male figures. Um, and the reverse is also true. Girls tend to identify more with their uh, moms. Age four. Uh, so here, the length at birth is doubled. Um, the pulse and respiratory rates do decrease slightly. Uh, the growth rate is similar to that of the three-year-old. Gross motor, here they skip and hop on one foot. They can catch a ball pretty reliably. They can throw a ball overhand. And now they can actually walk downstairs using alternate feet instead of uh, two feet on the same step. Fine motor, they can use scissors successfully to cut out a picture following an outline. They typically can lace their shoes, but they may not be able to tie the bow. In drawing, they can copy a square, traces, crosses, and a diamond. They can add three parts to a stick figure. Language here, they have a vocabulary of about 1,500 words or even more. Um, they use uh, four to five word sentences. Questioning is at its peak at this age, and they do tell exaggerated stories. Um, if they have older siblings that use profane words, you may hear uh, them saying those same profane words. Uh, they name one or more colors. And in terms of socialization, they tend to be very independent. Um, they also tend to be uh, selfish and impatient. They might be a little bit aggressive physically and verbally. They do have mood swings. Um, they will tell family tales to other people without restraint. <clears throat> know that sexual exploration and curiosity um, is demonstrated through play at this time. Uh, cognition. Here, uh, causality is still related to the proximity of events. Um, they can judge everything according to one dimension, such as height, width, and order. Um, here, they're beginning to uh, develop less egocentrism, and there's a little bit more social awareness. Um, they obey the parents because the parents have set limits, um, not because they really understand what's right and wrong. Family relationships. Um, they can rebel if the parents expect too much of them. Um, do's and don'ts do become very important to them. Uh, they can have a rivalry with an older or younger sibling. Um, they might resent an older sibling's privileges um, or the younger sibling's invasion of privacy. Uh, they might run away from home. Uh, next, we'll talk about the five-year-old child. And here, uh, you may actually notice that they're starting to uh, lose their baby teeth and they will uh, are gonna start gaining uh, their permanent teeth. Um, handedness is typically established at this point in time. Gross motor. Here they can hop and skip on alternate feet. Uh, they should be able to jump rope and skate with good balance. Uh, they should be able to walk backwards heel to toe and jump from a height of 12 inches and land on their toes. Um, they may even be able to balance on alternate feet with their eyes closed. Fine motor. Now they can tie their shoelaces. Um, they should be able to use scissors, simple tools, and a pencil very well. Um, now they are adding seven to nine parts to a stick figure. Uh, they may print a few letters, numbers, and words, uh, such as their first name. Now they have a vocabulary of about 2,100 words. Uh, they can use sentences of six to eight words. Um, they can name coins. They usually know four or more colors. Uh, they often will know the names of the days of the week, the months, and other time associated words. And they can even follow three commands in succession. They tend to be less uh, rebellious and quarrelsome than the four-year-old. Uh, they're not as open and accessible in thoughts and behaviors as in earlier years. They're independent but trustworthy. They are not foolhardy. They're a little bit more responsible. Uh, they have fewer fears and um, they are eager to do things right and they want to please. Uh, they really do try to live by the rules. Uh, they're not ready for concentrated close work or small print work because you may still be slightly farsighted. 
um, play is associative, as we've talked about earlier. Uh, they try to follow the rules. Um, and the thing is, is that they may actually cheat because they don't want to lose. Uh, cognition, um, they're a little bit more able to view other people's perspectives. Um, they tolerate differences rather than understand them. Uh, they are very curious about factual information regarding what's going on in the world. Family relationships. Here they get along with well with the parents. They might seek out the parent more often uh, than when they were four years of age for reassurance and security, especially when they're entering school. They enjoy activities such as sports, cooking, <clears throat> shopping with the parent of the same sex. Uh, some characteristics of pre-operational thought. So egocentrism, this is the inability to envision situations from a perspective other than one's own. An example of this is if a person is positioned between the toddler and an other child, the toddler who is facing the person will explain that both children can see the middle person's face. The young child is unable to realize that the other person's view of the middle person is from a different perspective, which would be the back. The implication is avoid moralizing about who something is wrong for if it requires an understanding of someone else's feelings or opinion. Telling a child to stop hitting because hitting hurts the other person is often ineffective because to the aggressor, it feels good to hit someone. Instead, it, let them know that hitting is not allowed. Transductive reasoning. This is reasoning from the particular to the particular. An example of this is as a child refuses to eat food because something previously eaten did not taste good. Here the implication, accept the child's reasoning, offer the refused food at a different time. Global organizations. Reasoning that changing any one part of the whole changes the entire whole. An example here is the child refuses to sleep in his or her room because the location of the bed has changed. Implication, accept the child's reasoning, using the same bed position or introduce change slowly. Centration, this is focusing on one aspect rather than considering all possible alternatives. Example, the child refuses to eat a food because of its color, even though it tastes and smell are acceptable. Again here, just accept the child's reasoning. Animism, this is attributing lifelong qualities to inanimate objects. An example is a child scolds the chair for making the child fall down. Join the child in scolding the chair. Keep frightening objects out of view. Irreversibility, this is the inability to undo or reverse the actions initiated physically. An example is when a child is told to stop doing something such as talking, they're unable to think of a positive activity. Therefore, tell them what you want them to do. State the request or instructions positively, like be quiet or please put that down, instead of telling them don't touch that. Magical thinking. This is believing that thoughts are all powerful and can cause events. Uh, an example is a child wishes someone died then if the person dies, the child feels at fault because of the bad thought that made the death happen. Calling children bad also is uh, not an appropriate um, thing for adults to do because that makes a child feel as if they are bad versus the behavior is what we have an issue with. Implications. Clarify that thoughts do not make things happen and that the child is not responsible. Uh, using I messages rather than you messages to communicate thoughts, feelings, and expectations or beliefs without imposing blame or criticism. Let the child know that it is the behavior that you do not approve of, not that the child themselves is not good or that they are bad. Inability to conserve. Basically, this is the inability to understand the idea that mass can be changed in size, shape, volume, or length without actually losing or adding to the original mass. An example is if two lines uh, are an equal length are presented in a way so that one looks longer than the other, 
the child will say the one that looks like it's longer they'll think that it is actually longer even though when you measure it with the ruler that they are the same size an implication uh, really is just um, trying to uh, reorient the child's view so they can uh, see how it is the, actually the same. Um, so how can we utilize this? Giving medicine in a small medicine cup rather than a large cup, because a child will imagine that the large cup contains more liquid. If the child refuses the medicine in the small cup, then pour it into a large cup because maybe the liquid will look like it's less uh, in a tall, wide container. Uh, here, you might want to give them a large, flat cookie instead of a thick, small one because a large, flat cookie looks bigger to them. Uh, if you want them to eat uh, meat or cheese, here, you, and they're going, that's too much, giving them a small, thick piece uh, may be better than a large, flat piece. Injury prevention during early childhood. So what kinds of things are they doing developmentally that increase issues with risks? So they are now walking, running, climbing, opening doors. They can ride a tricycle. They can throw a ball and other objects. So injury prevention. Of course, motor vehicles, we need to really uh, remember uh, all of those car seat rules that were uh, discussed in previous lectures. Supervise a child while playing outside. Do not allow a child to play on the curb or behind parked cars. Do not allow them to play in leaves or uh, in the snow, if we, you know, in trafficked areas because we don't want them to get hit by a car. Um, <clears throat> uh, supervise uh, tricycle riding. Remember, they always must be wearing a helmet. Uh, lock fences and doors if they're not directly supervising a child. Teach them to obey pedestrian safety rules. Obey traffic regulations. Only cross at crosswalks and when the traffic light signals that they're able to cross. Uh, stand back a step from the curb um, until it is time to cross. So don't be standing so close to the curb that you can uh, still be hit by a bus. Um, you want to teach children uh, to look left, right, and left again, and check for turning cars before crossing a street. Um, use the sidewalks. Uh, if there is no sidewalk, you want to walk on the left facing the traffic so you can see the cars coming and they can see you. Um, wear light colors at night and attach fluorescent material to clothing. Uh, that way the lights of the car can see you. Risks for injury. <clears throat> excuse me, risks for injury. Uh, so developmentally, um, they're able to explore if they're left unsupervised. Um, they are very, very curious. Um, they are helpless in water and they're not aware um, how it can be dangerous. And depth of water really doesn't have significance. So the injury prevention here is, uh, you know, preventing drowning. Um, so you want to supervise them closely, closely anytime they're close to any kind of water whatsoever. Keeping bathroom doors closed with the, did, the lid of the toilet uh, down. Um, they even have these uh, safety apparatus to make it so that it's uh, difficult to um, lift up the toilet lid. Um, have a fence around a swimming pool or um, a locked gate and then uh, begin to start teaching children uh, water safety and swimming. So uh, what are they doing developmentally? Again, that increased risks. Here they're able to uh, reach heights by climbing, stretching, and standing on toes. Uh, they'll pull objects. They'll explore holes or openings. They can open drawers and closets. Um, they're not really aware of uh, sources of heat or fire, um, and they can play with mechanical objects. So the problem here is we want to prevent issues with burns. So turning pot handles towards the back of a stove, uh, placing electric appliances um, towards the back of the counter, um, having guardrails in front of radiators, fireplaces, or other areas that can potentially be hot, store matches and cigarette lighters in a locked or inaccessible area, and then uh, please discard them carefully. 
uh, place burning candles, incense, hot foods, or cigarettes out of reach. Um, don't let tablecloths hang within the child's reach because they can pull it down on top of them. Uh, do not let electrical cords from an iron or other appliances um, hang within the child's reach. Again, they can pull it down and then a hot iron can fall on them. Uh, cover electrical outlets with protective plastic caps. Keep electrical wires hidden or out of reach. Do not allow child to play with electrical appliances, wires, or lighters. Stress danger of open flames. Teach them what hot means. Always check bath water temperature. Uh, in general, we say it's nice to keep the water heater a temperature no hotter than 120 degrees or lower. Um, and then don't allow children to play with the water faucets. Uh, and we want to avoid um, sunburns by applying sunscreen when the child is outside. Uh, behaviors related to risk of injury. So what can we see the child doing? Um, so they can explore by putting things in their mouth. Again, opening drawers, closets, and containers. They climb, they don't know how to read labels, and they don't know really about medication. What is a safe dose or amount? Uh, so problems here uh, that we wanna do is we wanna prevent issues with poisoning. So placing any toxic agents out of reach or in a locked cabinet. Um, caution against eating non-edible items like plants. Um, medications and poisonings uh, really need to be um, locked. Uh, if the child has, um, if there's medication in the house uh, and they have caps that have the childproof caps, make sure that once the medication has been taken, that childproof cap is replaced properly and then again, lock the medication up. Do, do not administer medication as um, candy. Always administer medication as medications. Don't store large surpluses of toxic agents. Um, and again, try to keep these locked. Uh, if you have uh, containers that contain toxic substances, do not reuse them, just throw them away. Um, teach children don't play in the trash containers. Um, and if you have a toxic substance, don't remove the label. Um, and it is very important to know the number of the poison control center. Uh, and so this is something that you can program into your cell phone or keep on your refrigerator. Uh, developmentally, they should be able to open doors and windows and go up and down stairs, um, although their depth perception is unrefined. So here, the injury prevention we need to think about are falls. Uh, you want to definitely keep, uh, be aware that screens on windows are intended to keep bugs out. Um, they don't really keep children in. Uh, so know that we want to have screens on the windows um, and have them nailed securely. And you may even need a guardrail on that. But um, know that it's not uncommon if a child was to push on the screen on a window, it may not uh, keep the child secure enough and they don't, they could actually fall out of a window. So please be very cautious with that. Um, place gates at the top and the bottom of stairs. Keep doors locked or use childproof doorknobs um, for uh, doors that uh, approach the stairs or high porches um, or a laundry chute. Uh, you want to remove um, scatter rugs or unsecured rugs because they can slip and fall. Um, apply non skid decals in the bathtub or the shower. Keep the rails fully raised in the mat mattress at its lowest level. Uh, keep large toys and bumper pads out of the crib or playpen uh, because kids can use these uh, to climb out of them. Uh, and then uh, once a child is you're concerned of them being able to climb out of the crib, that's when it's time to put them in a youth bed. Um, walkers, again, these can be very, very dangerous um, because they can fall, especially if they're near stairs. Um, you want to dress them in safe clothing. You don't want anything that's too long for them so they can fall on the floor and you want to keep their shoelaces tight. Uh, you want to keep the child restrained in vehicles. Um, don't ever leave them unattended in a shopping cart. 
um, you want to supervise them at playgrounds, and then you want to select play areas that have a soft ground cover um, and equipment that is age appropriate. Um, risk behaviors that we can see that can increase risk, uh, putting things in their mouth, um, and they may actually swallow hard or non-edible uh, items. So here the injury prevention is choking and suffocation. So we wanna avoid large round chunks of meat, like a whole hot dog. Um, you don't wanna give this to a young child. You may wanna cut it uh, into like quarters lengthwise and then cut it into, um, they kind of like imagine like a piece of pie. You wanna cut it like that. And that way they're small irregular pieces. Um, you don't want little circles that are shaped like a nickel because that can get caught in their throat. <coughs> Avoid fruits with pits, fish with bones, dried beans, hard candy, chewing gum, nuts, popcorn, grapes, and marshmallows. Again, we don't want them to choke. Also choose large sturdy toys without sharp edges or um, we also don't want them to have toys that have small re removable parts. Um, be very cognizant of dolls, the eyes, or stuffed animals that have little beaded eyes that they can fall off and then they can choke. Uh, keep safe toy boxes or chests without heavy lids. Um, because obviously we don't want uh, a heavy lid because that can fall and then hurt the child. Uh, keep Venetian blinds, uh, cords out of the child's reach because again, uh, we don't want them uh, to have an issue with strangulation. And children's clothing should not have drawstrings in them. So risks, they can still be clumsy in many skills, they're easily distracted, and they can actually be unaware of the danger that unfortunately some people possess. Uh, so here, what can we think about? Uh, avoiding bodily damage by not giving children uh, sharp pointy objects like knives, scissors, or toothpicks, especially when walking or running. Don't allow lollipops or similar objects in their mouth when they're walking or running. Uh, so they should not be walking and running, uh, eating a popsicle. Uh, teach safety precautions. Um, if they are holding a knife, which ideally they're not, teach them to hold it with a pointy end away from their face. Store all dangerous tools, garden equipment, and firearms in a locked cabinet. Be alert to danger of unsupervised animals and household pets. Use safety glass and decals on large glassed areas such as sliding doors. This way, if the child is running, they can see that there is a glass door in front of them because of the decal. Teach the child their name, address, and phone number, and to ask for help from appropriate people, like a cashier, security guard, or a policeman if they're lost. It's nice to have identification uh, on the child or sewn into their clothing or inside of their shoe. We do need to teach our children about stranger safety. Uh, so as parents, it would be important to not put personalized information on a child's clothing in public places, like having their name on their clothing, because a stranger can walk up to the child and say, hello, Johnny, how are you doing? And the child thinks that they know them, but it's not that they know them, it's just that Johnny was on, the name was on their shirt. Also teach children never go with a stranger. Tell parents if anyone makes a child feel uncomfortable in any way and that they need to let their parents know. Always listen to a child's concerns regarding other people's behaviors and teaching a child that it is okay to say no when confronted with uncomfortable situations. Just FYI, um, be aware that trauma to the epiphyseal growth plate can cause growth problems to that bone. So play during toddlerhood. Here, physical development, physical uh, suggested activities include, um, you know, having a lot of space where they can have physical activity and run about, uh, provide sandboxes, swings, and then other scaled down playground equipment. Social development, providing replicas of adult tools and equipment for imitative play. 
Let them help with adult tasks. Provide toys and activities that allow for expression of feelings. Uh, let them help with washing dishes or play with pots and pans and other utensils, of course, maintaining their safety. Mental development and creativity. Allow them to play with water. Uh, encourage building, drawing, and coloring. Uh, read them stories that are age appropriate. Monitor television viewing. Remember, we say uh, no more than two hours a day. Suggested toys would be things like push pull toys, a rocking horse, uh, riding toys, balls, uh, unpainted blocks, um, a load jam or slide, a pail and shovel. Social development here. Uh, any kind of musical device, um, purses, housekeeping toys, a toy telephone, uh, dishes and stoves, puppets and dolls, but remember no button eyes. Um, things to encourage mental development uh, or things that will enhance mental development and creativity. Things like wooden puzzles, cloth picture books, finger painting, crayons, um, and then again, appropriate uh, TV. Um, remember, under two, no TV. Two and over is the two hours of age appropriate a day. Then play during preschool years. Here, physical development. What can we do to enhance this? Provide space, again, for the child to run, jump, climb, teaching them to spin, uh, swim, teach simple sports and activities, things that encourage social development, encourage interactions with other children, intervene if they're becoming destructive and enrolling them in preschool. Mental development and creativity. Here, uh, what can we do to enhance this? Encourage creative efforts with raw materials, reading stories, um, attending theater and other cultural events that are appropriate to the child's age, taking them to the park, the ocean. Uh, they have wonderful children's museums, the zoo, uh, suggested toys are adjustable swings, tricycles, wading in a pool, sleds, skates, uh, but please make sure that the skates are adjusted according to the child's skill because we don't want them going too fast and falling. Social development. Uh, here a child-sized playhouse is wonderful, uh, dolls, stuffed toys, um, Trucks, cars, trains, airplanes, uh, play clothes for dress up, um, doctor and nurse kits, uh, any kind of like play makeup or shaving kits, all of these things are wonderful for that social development. Uh, mental enhancement and creativity. Here you could get things like books, jigsaw puzzles, um, musical toys, picture games, uh, blunt scissors, paper, and glue to encourage art. Um, crayons, poster paint, uh, any kind of like a blackboard and chalk um, or a whiteboard with the markers, uh, wooden and plastic construction sets, uh, magnifying glasses and magnets. Uh, just be very careful. They should be using those supervised. We don't want them uh, starting a fire with a magnifying glass if they're using it outside in the sun. So to gain a sense of initiative, preschoolers need exposure to a wide variety of play materials so they can learn as much as they can about how things work. Uh, the parents should be urged to provide play materials that encourage creative play, such as modeling play, and any experience with freeform play is helpful. Please note that play, uh, you might see between two and a half and three years of age um, that the child will develop an imaginary playmate. Um, and this typically disappears when they start school. Uh, imaginary playmates serve multiple functions. Companionship, uh, they can do what the child is trying to do. Um, they can experience what the child is experiencing, or maybe they can use them to forget. Um, they can actually be used to be blamed for punishments or uh, blamed to escape punishment. Um, so let's say the child dropped a cup of milk, they can say their imaginary playmate did so. Um, in this instance, what you can tell the child is that you're the only one that they see and therefore they are responsible. 
and then you can have you, them help you clean it up. Reassure the parent that this is normal. Next, let's talk about toilet training readiness. What are the guidelines to determine, is a child ready to be toilet trained? There are multiple guidelines. One is physical readiness. Voluntary control of anal and urethral sphincters usually occur by about 18 to 24 months. Are they able to stay dry for two hours and decreased uh, number of wet diapers? Are they waking up dry from a nap? Do they have regular bowel movements? Do they have the gross motor skills of sitting, walking, and squatting? And do they have fine motor skills to remove clothing? Mental readiness. Can they recognize the need to go to the restroom, you know, a bowel movement or urinate? Do they have the verbal or nonverbal skills to indicate when they need to go to the bathroom? Cognitively, are they able to imitate the pro appropriate behaviors and follow directions to go to the bathroom? Psychological readiness. Here, they're expressing willingness to please the parent. Are they able to sit on a toilet for five to 10 minutes without fussing or getting off? Are they curious about adults or older siblings' toileting habits? Are they impatient with soiled or wet diapers and they want to be changed immediately? Parental readiness. Here, do they recognize a child is ready? Are they willing to invest the time required for toilet training? Is there an absence of family stress or change, such as divorce, moving new siblings, or an imminent vacation? We want to start potty training in the absence of family stress. Dental care. Here we want to begin uh, to encourage good dental habits. They can brush teeth with parental supervision, but the parents may need to assist with the flossing until their early school age. Typically, the first dental visit is about one year of age. Uh, give supplemental fluorides uh, beginning about six months if necessary. And they can brush early with child toothpaste. Make sure they spit it out. So physically know that toddlers demonstrate lower doses like a sway back and their legs may even be bowed. Um, and typically they have a, you know, still a good size head and that protuberant belly. So what are some normal toddler preschooler behaviors and how can we cope? So sibling rivalry. This is the natural jealousy and resentment to a new baby in the family. Toddlers don't like changes due to the infant but it's not that they don't like the baby. They do. They might say they don't, but they do. Interventions. Prepare the child for a new infant before the baby is born when the mother starts to show. Don't let the child be left out. Show an adult what kinds of activities the infant will require like diapering and feeding. Don't say that you have a plague This is not realistic. Most people don't let their toddlers and preschoolers play with their newborn baby. Uh, they can take this opportunity to introduce basic aspects of reproduction and sexuality. Let the, let the child feel the, the fetus move. They can see, ah, there is a live little being in there. Ask visitors if you feel comfortable to remember the child too when they're visiting if they're bringing a gift. Know that it's not uncommon for a child to regress with the new baby coming in. Ignore regressive behaviors and praise age-appropriate behaviors. A preschooler may act out at preschool because they don't want to tell their parents how they feel. You should never, ever leave infants with small children without adult supervision. They may accidentally hurt them. Temper tantrums. As toddlers strive for autonomy, they are confronted with many obstacles. They can get it frustrated and then they explode. The child may scream, kick, lie on the floor and kick, bang their heads, hold their breath and faint. Uh, this last one sometimes causes parents concerns, but we tell them in general, don't worry, uh, the child will breathe and regain consciousness. In general, this is not harmful to the child. Parents should ignore the behavior unless it is harmful to the child. Reward the child for post-tantrum uh, behavior when they're behaving well. Try to minimize misbehavior with timeouts. Be sure to set realistic behavioral expectations. 
If a child is throwing a temper tantrum and you need them to get into the car, wait a moment. If they don't stop, then you may just need to pick them up and place them in the car and buckle them into their car seat. Negativism. This is a toddler's method of asserting control. Often they will just say no to everything, even if they're agreeing. Teach parents to give them a choice between two options to avoid giving them the opportunity to say no. Uh, you can also say things like, uh, bedtime is after the story versus do you want to go to bed? Uh, you can make a game out of things. Uh, you can be, uh, instead of saying, put your shoes on, here they can say no. But what you can do as an alternative is, I bet I can put my shoes on faster than you can. Again, make it a game, but let them win. Dawdling. This is the natural procrastination that we see in children these age. They may do things slow or do something else uh, before doing what you've asked. Ritualism. Here they want their own way and they're upset if the ritual is disrupted. Uh, often they have a hard time coping with disrupted routines. As a nurse, you can try to find out what the family routines are and implement them in the hospital. Toddlers do have quite a few fears. Um, they do still have some separation anxiety. Um, so tell parents, don't sneak out of the hospital. Tell the child before they're leaving. Uh, the parent can leave an article of their clo clothing um, or they can leave their voice on uh, some type of a recording device so uh, the nurse can then play it and the child can hear their parents uh, telling them a story. They may have stranger anxiety, so they can be shy and afraid of strangers. So as a nurse, you will talk to the parent first and then approach the child. They may have general fears to animals or loud noises. Um, do that uncomfortable treatment or therapies in the treatment room because we want the bed to be considered a safe space. Toddlers cope with stress by regressing a retreat from present functioning to a decreased level of behavior. So you may have a child who was not sucking their thumb and now because in their, when they're in the hospital, they might start sucking their thumb again. Parents should praise appropriate behavior and then ignore regressive behavior. Fears for preschoolers. This is where you're gonna see the most in number and the widest variety of real and imagined fears. They have that animism, so giving lifelike qualities to inanimate objects can cause fear. They do have fear of annihilation, loss of body parts, and therefore um, it is important to use Band-Aids. That way all of their blood doesn't fall out because the Band-Aid holds it in. Um, this is what they're thinking. Uh, also, they can pick up on their parental fears, and these are actually the fears that are long-lasting and hard to dispel. Let the child have a dim light on so they can see in their room that there are no monsters. Um, if they do have a fear, um, you can desensitize it by exposing the child to the fear and a little bit at a time in a safe environment, and then allow them to see other children engaging in the fear activity. This might help them see, okay, no, this is actually a safe and maybe even fun thing to do. Masturbation. Toddlers may manually stimulate themselves or do posturing like tightening their thighs. Parents need to be accepting and critical versus critical. Um, although as parents, we do need to teach them that there is an appropriate time and place and let them know that this is a private activity. Um, if parents refer to the genitals as dirty, as dirty then the child may think of sexual functions dirty later in life. Sex roles are differentiated and evident in imitative play. Preschoolers, here masturbation is more pronounced at age four. Again, um, as we did with your toddler, we want to emphasize that it is a private activity. Um, they're very conscious of sex role stereotyping. Uh, what boys are allowed to do, what girls are allowed to do. Um, they do like to dress in clothing that the same-sex uh, same parents wear. Uh, wear. Uh, boys might say, um, boys don't play with dolls, uh, or girls aren't supposed to play with fire trucks. Um, so they do tend to um, be very uh, sex role stereotyped at this age.
Often it's because of what they see in the media. Um, sex education in this age group is, they are curious about the opposite sex. They may play doctor. Uh, if you see this, don't freak out. Um, just if, if clothes have been removed, have everybody redress themselves and then ask the child what it is that they wanna know. Uh, tell the children to ask their parents and engage in a different activity. Uh, they may ask where babies come from, and then parents should ask what it is that they know and what do they think. Be simple and honest. Um, you don't need to give them lots of the nitty gritty information. Um, you can give them very basic information, and then as they get older, you can uh, continue to give them more information that is age appropriate. Sleep disturbances. Uh, often toddlers, these, the sleep disturbances are related to separation anxiety. You can help this by having a bedtime ritual the same time every night they should be going to sleep. Uh, maybe they have a little snack, a quiet activity, and they go to sleep with a favorite toy. Preschoolers, they might actually have a problem uh, with sleep terrors or nightmares. They are very, very different. And here this table will talk about the differences between nightmares and sleep terrors. So what is a description? A nightmare is a scary dream. This takes place uh, with full REM sleep and is followed by full awakening. A sleep terror, this is actually a partial arousal from that very deep stage four non-REM, non-dreaming sleep. Uh, for the nightmare, uh, the time of distress is after the dream is over, the child wakes up, uh, they might be crying or they might call for their parents. Um, now, uh, they tend not to be distressed actually during the nightmare it's, itself, it's when they wake up. Uh, so during the sleep terror, during the terror itself, uh, the child um, might actually like scream and thrash about. Afterwards, the child is calm. The child may actually not even wake up during a sleep terror. Um, time of occurrence. Uh, typically, um, the nightmare is the second half of the night. That's when the dreams are most intense. Uh, sleep terror is usually the first uh, one to four hours after falling asleep when non-dream sleep is the deepest. The child's behavior. Uh, crying in younger children, they might be scared, uh, here, um, the, if they, they just may be very, very terrified. Um, with the sleep terror, uh, you'll notice that this table, some of the content is in the wrong area, so um, I will tell you where it belongs. Um, initially, the child may sit up and thrash or run in a bizarre manner. Uh, their eyes may be bulging, their heart may be racing. Um, they might sweat, they might scream and talk. Uh, they look like they're very scared or angry. Um, the thing is, is that if the parent, if the child, parent was to like tap the child and wake up the child, they will be very confused because they don't even know any of this is happening. It's they're almost, it's like when the sleep terror is taking place, they still are in a way like asleep and they're not usually responsive to other people. Speaking of responsiveness to others, uh, the nightmare the child is aware of and reassured by other people's presence. The sleep terror, the child's really not aware of an other person's presence they're not comforted uh, by somebody else being there, and they may even push the person away um, or thrash about if somebody tries to hold them down with a sleep terror. Return to sleep. So a child with a nightmare, it may be very difficult for them to go back to sleep because they uh, are afraid. The child with the sleep terror is usually rapid, um, and if they did even wake up, uh, it's very hard to keep them awake. So typically, this child with a sleep terror quickly goes back to sleep, and they may not have even wake, woken up. The child with the nightmare will uh, have a difficult time going back to sleep because they're afraid. Description of the dream. If they're old enough and they have the vocabulary, they will be able to do so. 
uh, for the sleep terrors, there is no memory of a dream because they didn't actually have a dream. Interventions. Here you want to accept the dream as real, sit with the, com the child, um, offer them comfort, um, let them know that they are safe. Uh, you might want to lie down with them. Um, they don't really recommend having children sleep in the parent's bed. Um, know that if the child is having uh, lots of issues with nightmares, you want to consider uh, professional counseling. So a child with a sleep terror, observe the child for a few minutes without uh, interfering um, or until the child becomes calm and wakes fully. Only intervene if necessary. We only intervene to keep the child safe. If the child gets up, guide the child back to bed. Stress to parents that sleep terrors, they are a normal part um, of the preschool age. They're very common. Um, and then often they really don't really require any kinds of interventions. Um, something that is interesting though, there is some research that shows that sleep apnea may precipitate sleep terrors. So if a child is having uh, very frequent sleep terrors, um, let the physicians know because there may actually, uh, it may be necessary to do a sleep study in certain situations. Speech disfluency. This is a stuttering and stammering between the ages of two and four years of age. This is a normal part of speech development and parents shouldn't pay uh, undue stress on it. Um, this can actually cause an increase in the problem. But if the stuttering continues, uh, typically by five years old, this is when they would make an evaluation recommendation. Nutrition, two and under, they should have a regular diet, full fat. Do not give them low fat or skim milk due to the, the high protein and the low calorie content. Toddlers at about 18 months of age have a decreased appetite due to slower growth and a decreased nutritional needs. Therefore, they may develop something called physiologic anorexia. Between two to three years of age, it's very hard for these guys to sit still, so they may be uh, more apt to graze. So it's like nibbling on foods all day long. So giving them finger foods and healthy snacks is a great thing to do. Don't overwhelm children with too much food on a plate. You may want to give them uh, for every year about a tablespoon of solid foods like vegetables or rice or give one third to a quarter of an adult size for like milk, bread, fruits. Because of ritualism and autonomy, they may want to eat with certain dishes and silverware. They may actually want to eat the same food three days in a row and then refuse to eat anything else. This is called a food jag. What's interesting about this is they made it, maybe they were eating a uh, grilled cheese sandwich for three days. And then day four, they're like, I hate grilled cheese sandwiches. So know that this doesn't necessarily give a well-balanced diet, but attempts to change it is very difficult. So here we're gonna offer other nutrition, nutritious foods in small amounts, even though we are giving in to their food, Jay. Growth and development during the school age years. Six years of age, what are we going to see? Uh, here, the growth and weight continue to grow slowly. Uh, the central mandible incisors erupt. They lose their first tooth. Um, there's an increase in dexterity. They are very active and con they have a constant activity. Um, they may return to finger feeding. They are aware of their hand as a tool. And here, their vision reaches that maturity. So here, we expect to see 20-20 uh, vision. Mental, they develop the concepts of numbers. They should be able to count 13 pennies. They know whether it's morning or afternoon. Typically, they know their right and left hands. Um, and here they will describe an object in a picture rather than simply just saying what it is. At six, they go to first grade. Adaptive here, um, if they're using a knife, they should be able to spread butter so it shouldn't be a sharp knife uh, or jam on bread. Uh, at play, they should be able to cut and fold and paste paper toys. Um, they can crudely sew if the needle is threaded for them. Uh, they can take a bath without supervision. But here, please, I always say, have the bathroom door open and take a little peek. Uh, they can perform bedtime activities alone. 
Um, they may read from memory. They like spelling games. They like things like checkers and simple cards. Um, sometimes they steal money or attractive items. Um, they do have a hard time owning up to what their misbehavior, um, and they are trying out their own abilities. Personal social, here they can share and cooperate better. Um, they like to be around other children their own age. They will cheat to win. Uh, they may engage in rough play. They might be jealous of their younger brother or sister. Um, they often want to do what they see adults doing. They still might have that occasional temper tantrum. Uh, they tend to boast about what they are doing. They are a little bit more independent, uh, probably because of school. Um, and they do have their own way of doing things. Uh, seven years of age, here their maxillary central incisors and lateral mandible incisors are erupting. Um, they tend to be more cautious in approaches to new performances. Um, and then they will repeat things because they want to get better at them and master them. The jaw is expanding to accommodate their permanent teeth. Mental, they notice that certain parts of um, things are missing from a picture. Uh, they are developing the concept of time. Typically, if they've been taught, they can read an ordinary clock and they can correctly tell the time to the nearest quarter hour. Um, and they're using a clock for practical purposes. Um, they attend second grade. They tend to be mechanical in reading and they may not stop at the end of a sentence. And sometimes they skip words like it, the, he. Adaptive, here they should be able to use a table knife for cutting meat, but if the meat is really tough, then they, will have, they may have a difficult time with that. They should be able to brush and comb their hair without help, and they might be stealing at this point in time. Personal social, here they're really becoming a real member of the family group. Uh, they'll take part in group play. Uh, the boys tend to play with boys. Girls tend to prefer to play with girls. And they'd like to spend time alone. They don't require a lot of companionship at seven. Age eight and nine. So they're continuing to grow about two inches a year. They tend to have uh, fluid movements. They tend to be graceful and poised, always on the go. Uh, they jump and they can chase people. They like to skip. They tend to have uh, smooth movements um, and they have uh, better uh, fine motor control. Um, if they've been taught, they can actually taught, uh, uh, do cursive writing. They can dress themselves completely. Um, they may overdo. They can be hard to quiet down after recess. Um, they may be a little bit more limber. Uh, they can, their bones are growing a little bit faster than the ligaments and the soft tissue, so they can have something called growing pains. And the way you can treat this is with massage, warm breaths, and if they're really complaining of a lot of pain, you can even give them a little bit of ibuprofen. Mental, here they can give similarities and differences between two items from memory. They should be able to count backwards 10 to 1. They've developed that concept of reversibility. They should repeat the days of the week and month in order, and they no normally know the date. Um, they can make change out of a quarter. They attend third and fourth grade. They may read more. Um, they may actually wake up early just to read. They enjoy books. They enjoy comics. Um, typically, they can rel be relied upon to get to school on time. Uh, they like collections, and they may actually do simple paintings or drawings. Adaptive, here they can make use of common tools such as a hammer, saw, or screwdriver. Um, they can help with routine household tasks, that's like, such as dusting and sweeping. Um, so they can actually be held responsible for certain household chores. Uh, they may buy useful articles. Um, they can run useful errands. Uh, they like school. Um, they want to answer the questions. Uh, they tend to be very afraid of failing a grade, and they're ashamed of bad grades. Um, they can be very critical of themselves. Um, this is a great time to have them participate in music and in sports lessons. Um, personal social, here, they're easy to get along with at home. They like the, and they work well with the reward system. Um, they tend to be very sociable and well-behaved. 
um, they're starting to become a little bit interested in those boy-girl relationships, although they, they won't admit it. Um, they may go about the home and community freely uh, with friends or alone. Um, again, you need to be very careful with this one because uh, kids may need supervision, um, like when they're walking to school. Uh, they like to compete and play games. Uh, they can show preference in their friends and the groups. Um, they develop modesty. And here also they enjoy scouts and group sports. Age 10 to 12 years of age, physical motor. So here, boys, their growth in height actually slows a little bit, but their weight is increasing. So they may become a little bit obese at this time frame. Um, posture is more similar to an adult's and they will overcome the lordosis. Girls, they may start to have uh, pubescent body changes, so their body lines will soften and round out. Also at this, at this time, um, the remainder of the teeth will erupt um, and they will have a full development of their teeth with the exception of the wisdom teeth. Mental, here they may write brief stories, attend fifth to seventh grades, uh, write the occasional uh, note to their family or friends. Um, they can use a telephone for practical purposes. Um, they do respond to uh, advertising, so pay attention to that. Um, they may read for practical uh, purposes and for enjoyment. Um, they like stories. They like going to the library. Um, they enjoy uh, books about adventure and animals and even romance. Remember, always age appropriate. Um, adaptive, they can make useful articles or they enjoy doing easy repair work. Um, they may cook and sew in small ways, always being very careful that they don't burn themselves or cut themselves with knives. Um, they can be taught to raise pets. Typically, they can wash and dry their own hair. Um, they may need to be minding to do so though. Uh, they may be left home alone for an hour or so, but please make sure they've been taught home alone safety. Personal social. Here they have a very best friend and they talk about them constantly. Um, they may be selective with their friends. Um, they're, again, developing that interest in uh, whoever sex they're going to be attracted to. Um, they tend to be diplomatic. Um, they like friends. They like their family. Their family really has meaning. Um, they want to please their parents. They can be very affectionate. Um, and they definitely respect their parents. Um, please note that teasing can have a lasting effect on kids. Uh, peers give uh, each other a sense of security as they try to become more independent. So growth and development of the school-aged child from 6 to 12 years of age. In general, they grow about four and a half to six and a half pounds a year. They grow about two inches a year. They start to lose their teeth at about six, and then all primary teeth are typically lost and permanent teeth come in at this time, uh, with the exception of the wisdom teeth. Usually they have anywhere from 22 to 26 teeth by the time they are 12. Lymphatic tissues grow until about nine, and then frontal develop but frontal sinuses are developing at about seven years of age. Know that there's an increase in muscle and bone strength, coordination, and, gra and grace. Puberty may begin as early as nine for girls. Uh, puberty in girls is earlier than in past generations. The growth spurt begins or may begin at this time, causing an increase in nutritional needs. So let's talk a little bit about injury prevention during the school age years. So what are some developmental behaviors that increase uh, risk related to injury? There's an increase in involvement in activities away from home. They're excited by speed and motion, and they are easily distracted by their environment. The good thing is, is that they can be reasoned with. So motor vehicle accidents. We want to educate the child regarding proper use of seat belts and booster seats. Um, and then making sure that when they are a passion, passenger in the vehicle, keeping their arms and all of their body inside the car. Do not lean against the door and don't, don't interfere with the driver. Remind parents and children that no one should ride in the bed of a pickup truck. 
emphasize safe pedestrian behavior, also insist on wearing safety apparel like a helmet when they're riding their bicycle, a moped, bike, or all-terrain vehicle. Uh, risk related to injury. Uh, next, here are some of the things that you might see developmentally is they're apt to overdo. They may work hard to perfect a skill. They may be cautious, but they're not necessarily fearful. Um, and they do like to swim. So here we need to pay attention to drowning prevention. You want to teach the child to swim, teach basic rules of water safety, select safe and supervised places to win. Uh, if they are diving into the water, please make sure that it is deep enough so they don't get injured. Always swim with a companion. Use an appropriate, an approved flotation device anytime they're on the water or a boat and advocate for legislation require, requiring fencing around pools. I believe this is already required in the state of California. Um, also, if you have a pool, please make sure you know CPR. And even if you don't have a pool, truly, I believe all parents should know CPR. Risk related to injury, they have an increase in independence. Um, they tend to be adventuresome and they enjoy trying new things. So what can we do to make sure they stay safe? We want to prevent issues with burns. Um, so this is true for everybody, having those smoke detectors in the homes and then again, making sure that the water heaters are set no higher than 120 because we don't want them to get scalding burns. I'm also teaching the child uh, how to safely interact with um, any kinds of toys like chemistry sets, and then also uh, keeping them safe from matches, bonfires, barbecues, and how to behave appropriately around uh, cooking utensils. Uh, also teaching them to avoid climbing or flight kind, flight flying a kite, excuse me, around any kind of electrical wires. Um, teaching a child what they should do in the event of a fire. Um, it's always a good idea to have a fire plan for the home and schools typically will have fire drills, uh, but that's not something that should just be done at school. There should be a plan as well for the home in the event of a fire, what should they do? Teaching a child uh, safe cooking, using low heat, avoid frying stuff, uh, being careful of steam burns or scalds. Also teaching them how to use a microwave safely because food can actually explode and we don't want them getting burned from exploding food. Uh, risk related to injury here, um, they typically will adhere to group rules, um, but they may be influenced uh, easily by their friends and they have a strong allegiance to their friends. Uh, so issues here, poisoning. So teaching children regarding the hazards of taking uh, non-prescriptions medications and, and, and chemicals, including aspirin and alcohol and any other kinds of drugs that they should not be taking. Teaching children to say no if they're offered illegal or dangerous drugs or alcohol. And then keeping potentially dangerous items um, not just out of reach. I know your textbook says out of reach, but we really do advocate keeping things locked. Um, and then also keeping the labels on all medications and toxins. So risk related to injury here, they've got a lot more physical skills. Um, they need a lot of physical activity and they want to acquire new skills and they will uh, keep practicing until they perfect some of their skills. Uh, also, they will attempt hazardous feats. Um, they delight in physical activity and may overdo. Uh, sometimes their growth in their height can exceed muscular coordination uh, and growth. So here, what do we want to prevent? Um, bodily damage. Um, we want to really have uh, facilities that are supervised so when the child is participating activities, they are supervised. We want to encourage safe play. Uh, if you have firearms in the home, please make sure that they are locked up. And typically the legislation is the firearm is locked separately from ammunition, which is also locked. Uh, teach proper care of 
and um, respect for anything that could be considered dangerous, like power tools. Uh, teach children not to tease or surprise dogs or invade their territory. Teach them do not take a dog's toy or interfere with a dog's feeding. Stress eye, ear, and mouth protection when using pot uh, potentially hazardous objects or when engaging in hazardous sports. Um, really, we're constantly telling people don't use trampolines. These can be very, very dangerous. Um, and if you are going to be using trampolines, please make sure that you are the child is supervised, even if they have the netting surrounding it. Um, teach safety regarding uh, corrective devices like their glasses. Um, if they wear contact lenses, um, please make sure that they know how to uh, keep the contact lenses clean and wash their hands when they're utilizing them because we don't want them to develop corneal damage. Uh, make sure that they uh, know safety regulations regarding skateboard use and inline skates. Um, emphasize proper conditioning and safe practices and uh, use safety equipment for sports or recreational activities. Uh, you want to use, make sure they're being cautious and uh, teach them, you know, try as much as possible to avoid hazardous sports. But if they are going to be participating in sports that are a little bit more dangerous, make sure that they are supervised. Uh, using saf uh, uh, safety glass and decals on large glass areas like sliding glass doors. Um, using window guards to prevent falls. Making sure that they know their name, their address, and their phone number. And who can they ask for help if they get lost? like, again, the cashier, a security guard, or police. Um, again, having their uh, identification and phone number sewn into their clothes or inside their shoe is a good idea. Teaching stranger safety. Again, uh, avoiding personalized clothing in public places, cautioning them not to go with strangers, um, have them tell the parent if someone makes, is making them uncomfortable, always listening to the child's concern regarding behavior of other people, teaching them that it is okay to say no when they're confronted with uncomfortable situations. Next, we're gonna talk about uh, what happens if a tooth gets knocked out. Uh, so this is an evolved tooth. Now, if it is a baby tooth, we're not really so worried about that because then they're, when, once their uh, adult teeth come in, then the tooth will be replaced. But if this is an adult tooth, now we've got an issue. So here what you will do is you will get the tooth, hold it by the crown, try not to touch the root area. The root area is the part that goes into the gum. The tooth, the tooth is dirty, rinse it very gently under running water or saline. Uh, make sure that you put the stopper in the sink or the basin because if you drop the tooth, you don't want it to go down the drain. You can put this tooth back into the socket. Make sure it's facing the correct direction. Um, you can have the child hold the tooth in place and then get the child to the dentist as soon as possible. If the tooth is replaced within 30 minutes, there's actually a 70% chance of reattachment. When you're driving the child to the dentist, avoid sudden stops or sharp turns because you don't want to dislodge the tooth. If you feel uncomfortable putting the tooth back in, you can put the tooth uh, in cold milk or in saliva. It can be under the child's tongue or even under the parent's tongue. Um, if the child is holding the tooth in the mouth, as I mentioned, you want to avoid uh, sudden starts and stops um, because you don't want the child to swallow the tooth. Um, when you are going to the dentist, please remember to take the tooth. Okay, next we are going to talk about uh, the role of the teacher. After all, we are talking about the school age child, so you can't uh, forget to talk about the teacher. Um, so what do they do? They stimulate and guide the child's intellectual development. They can shape the child's attitudes and values. Know that it's not uncommon for children to hero worship a special teacher. They learn social interaction, and it's important to remember how a teacher positively or negatively interacts with a child can affect how others treat them 
and it can affect their self-concept. So helping a child when they are in school, what can we do? So general guidelines, we want to be supportive, um, encourage them sharing their ideas and thoughts. Be positive, the child should experience success in school every single day. Share an interest in reading, teach them about the library, discuss books that they are reading. You want to encourage uh, activity rather, rather than passive learning. Encourage originality. Help the child to make their own projects from discarded, discarded articles or other available materials. Foster the development of hobbies and collections. Encourage children to wonder and reflect during free time. Encourage family experiences and, to, and trips to places of interest. Encourage questioning. Help the child to discover sources for information or places to explore and investigate. We want to stimulate creative thinking and problem solving. Help the child to try out new solutions of problems and let them make a mistake. You know, making a mistake is okay. This is a great way to learn. We want to use rewards rather than punishment. Some specific guidelines. Meet the teacher at the beginning of the school year and plan to visit the school to see what is taught and expected. Send the child to school every day. Teachers are concerned when parents make other plans for their children. It conveys the impression that the school's not important. Demonstrate an illness in what the child is learning. Demonstrate an interest in content and growth more than the grades. Make it clear to the child that schoolwork is between the child and the teacher. The teacher and child should set goals for better school performance to allow the child to feel responsible for school successes and failures. Take advantage of situations that support and reinforce school learning. Share information with teachers that will help them understand the child better. After all, the parent knows the child best. Communicate with the teacher if there appears to be a problem. Avoid waiting for the scheduled conference. Provide a quiet, well-lit area for study that is safe from interruptions and do not allow television or radio. Avoid dictating a, a time for study, but do enforce rules such as no television or screen time until the homework is done. With the advent of students doing more work on computers, sometimes it's difficult to uh, address the screen time. Are they doing something fun or are they doing their homework? It is for this reason that the computer should be in a public area where the child can be monitored. Accept the child's word that work is complete when they say it is. Help with homework should focus on explaining the question, not giving the answer. Teach the child to break large tasks, like maybe a report, into smaller, more manageable tasks spread over the allotted time, rather than trying to do the entire project the night before it's completed. Limit home tutoring to special circumstances, such as when the teacher requests parental assistance after a child's prolonged absence. Request special help for children with learning problems. Support the school staff by showing respect for both the school system and the teacher. At least do this in the presence of the child. School phobia. This is more common in kids 10 years old and over, typically occurs after a negative incident. Signs and symptoms are uh, absent when the child is not in school um, or when no school is scheduled. Um, here you could see uh, anorexia, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, dizziness, abdominal pain, headache, and leg pain are common. So the primary goal is to return the child to school. The parents must be convinced gently but firmly that immediate return is essential and that it's their responsibility to insist on school attendance. The longer the child is permitted to stay out of school, the more difficult it will be for them to re-enter. Trying to find the cause of the phobia will only delay the return to school and inhibit the child's ability to cope. Professional counseling is recommended if the problem persists, but the child's return to school should not wait for counseling. Latchkey children. Here, this, is, this term is used to describe children in elementary school who are left to care for themselves before or after school 
without supervision of an adult. Uh, this can actually cause issues with injury and delinquent behavior. Often outside activities uh, with peers are diminished. To cope with fears and anxieties while alone, these children may devise strategies such as hiding in the house, playing the television at a loud volume, or playing a radio at a loud volume, or using pets as comfort. These children must be taught home alone safety, how to call 911, how to prepare snacks that they don't need to cook. It's not uncommon, especially for your younger school age children, to participate in dishonest behavior. And here we're going to talk about that right now. So one dishonest behavior that we can see is that young children are not able to differentiate fact from fantasy, but by school age they can. Sometimes children will lie to avoid getting punished, to meet expectations by others that they haven't been able to live up to, a way of getting something easy, um, if they have low self-esteem, or a way to get ahead. Young children are quick to tattle on others. Parents need to role model truthfulness and focus on how respect is lost if they are not believed. Cheating. This is common in five and six years old. They will cheat to win. It disappears as they get older, but if parents cheat and kids see it, then they're going to think it's okay. Again, parents need to model behavior that they want their children to perform and focus on the importance of honesty. Stealing. Between five and eight years of age, this is not uncommon. They have a, sen a limited sense of property rights. Older children may steal because they want to buy a coveted item, or maybe they're angry and they want revenge towards their parents, um, or maybe to make up for something that they don't have. If a household has a lot of communal property, uh, the child might have a difficult time identifying property rights of others. For example, if someone takes money from the pockets and around the house, the child may wonder why they can't take money from the parent's wallet or purse. Parents can give a child some personal space to develop property rights, like giving them an allowance or giving them a piggy bank. Um, if the child steals, tell them why it's wrong. Make them pay it back or return it to the, personal, the person who is the owner. This usually stops the stealing. Stress and fear. Things that can cause issues would be things like bullying, home conflict, and then if they're seeing violence portrayed in the media, that can also increase issues with stress. Allow children to verbalize their concerns. We want to encourage physical activity and exertion to diffuse excess energy when they're angry. We want to teach problem solving, teach the expected behavior and the repercussions of failing to comply. Children will copy their parents' method of handling stress, reassure children that they are safe, and encourage them to verbalize their feelings. In general, we want to encourage healthy eating, good nutrition, promotion of visual and hearing health, and testing, good dental hygiene. Uh, they should be going to the dentist every six months. Usually, they sleep anywhere from nine to 11 and a half hours each night. They should participate in daily exercise, and it's better to have them be more active than passive. Children need health information regarding nutrition, sleep, exercise, drug use, and sex education and HIV and AIDS. These should be taught as part of a comprehensive health teaching program. This can be taught at all levels from simple to complex. It is important to teach content according to the child's development. Classes generally occur in fourth, seventh, and ninth grade with an increasing in depth of information in these areas. Remember, the school-aged children's friends provide them with security as they gain independence from their parents. In terms of nutrition, please feel free to the myplate.gov for accurate nutritious, nutritional information for the school-age child. We want them to have plenty of fruits and vegetables as well as whole grains, and then less fat and sugar. This is the completion of part A for week two theory lecture. 
um, please be sure to read your textbook and complete the assignments for this week. This will help to facilitate the utilization of this content and applying it to nursing practice. Please remember, this is, uh, I'm sorry, I said week 2A. This is the objectives for week three. So this is part A for week three. Uh, make sure that you watch uh, week three lecture part B. Thank you very much and see you later. Bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.